This is the uh, the Jedi things they wear, right? I've heard them called obis. I've heard them called tabards. I've heard them called epaulets. None of that's actually accurate because um, this is made up for a movie. We're trying to put you know actual names on things. Uh, so we're just going to call it shoulder armor, for lack of a better term. We've got four of the lining cut out. And then we have these pieces. And these are leather. And it's hard to find four long, thin pieces of leather. So what I do is, right here is where the waist, sash, and belt go. So I have a, a split here. We're going to stitch them together and stitch these together. Then we stitch the shoulders, we put Velcro on the lining just to hold everything in place. And then uh, flip everything right side out, the, the usual. Shouldn't be too difficult. Um, the hardest thing to remember is when you're sewing leather, especially thin couch leather like this, um, use a leather needle. If you get the thicker, like actual leather, you only need to do the pieces. You don't need to line it, you don't need to do any extra steps I do. Um, this is this will work perfectly for fabric too. If you're using just fabric, the same fabric as your uh, robe, you want um, eight pieces instead of four. That's it. And then you just sew them all together. So let me show you how to do this. It's actually very simple. First thing we're going to do is sew the lining together. So we just put the top together. Make sure you have right sides facing right sides. We're just going to do a Standard 3 8 inch stitch across the top. We're going to lay it flat so the wrong side is up first so we can press these seams. Makes things lay better later. Alright. Now, putting Velcro on this to hold it to the, the armor, or to the, uh, the jacket, of course. So we want fuzzy side down because it's facing the body. I have no idea where I put my pins there. And this is just gonna get a standard zigzag stitch all the way around to hold it in place. This is not a crucial point or a crucial piece of the armor. So uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. But well, we do want to make sure that the folds we just pushed out stay pushed out. And then we're just going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around. If you want a sewing tutorial, I highly recommend making a jumpsuit. That's probably my favorite tutorial. It came out really good. Everything is nice and close. You can see what's going on for most of it. See? That holds the, the waist or the seam allowance in place. So we just do the same thing for the other side. This is the right side of the shoulder armor. Same fabric the tunic's made out of. I'm going to dye it a different color, or I might use it for a different jet. I'm not 100% yet. And then I have the lining. The only difference between the lining and the right side is the lining has a patch of velcro on the inside. They're the same size, same shape, same everything. They're sewn together at the top. All I'm going to do is pin all the way along, both sides, and I'm going to seam. I'm going to figure out which side I want to be the front, which side I want to be the back, because the front, or the back I mean, is only going to be stitched about an inch in. We're going to go all the way around, then all the way back, and then about another inch, maybe two inches. Doesn't take a lot of fabric to turn it right side out, but we're going to do that to both of these right now.
We're gonna cut the corners. As per normal. Anything that has a sharp corner, we're gonna cut. Nice thing about the, uh, the bend this has is it's gentle enough that you probably aren't gonna need any relief cuts in it. So you just, you know, cut and go, cut and go. Turn it inside out, or right side out. And that's where we get this. This one I'm putting a top stitch on, just because I want it to be a little more visible. I want it to have that double ridge. It could easily just be pressed and be done. If you want it stiffer, use lining, or uh, interfacing, I'm sorry, use interfacing. I feel the Velcro on the back really helps stiffen everything up. So at this point, all we do is top stitch and the shoulder armor in fabric is done. So I'm gonna do that right now, show you what it looks like. So there it is, fabric, Jedi armor, shoulder armor, pauldrons, epaulets, OB, whatever you want to call them. It looks good. I like the white and the gray. It's got an interesting look to it. The thing I really love is I love the black underneath that, that makes kind of a shadow. It makes it look more drawn, and that was kind of what I was going for. With the right belt, this would be absolutely stunning. Pretty cool, I like it. Let's see what it looks like in leather though. Alright, I have switched over to my leather needle and re-threaded everything. Now I am just stitching top grain to top grain the same. We're gonna go half inch on this one. You can hand sew this too. You punch all the holes and hand do it, but it's not really that big of a deal. Now this isn't sewing as well as it should be, simply because I got a little excited and I wanted to see what it looked like and I already dyed the top of this one. That was completely my mistake. I should have waited. I should have sewn everything together and then dyed it, but it is what it is. We are where we are.
So we have a two top grains. Make sure the curves are going the right direction because you want the curves to be yeah. symmetric. One's a front and one is a back now. And we just stitch these across just like we just did. And then the same thing for the next one. Luckily, since I'm doing these in leather, it's not going to need to be interfaced. Because leather's stiff enough. All right, we're gonna lay everything out and see where we're at. Since I am using leather, I'm going to contact cement these open just so it lays much smoother. So we just open them up. Try and open the contact cement. That has glued itself shut. Just contact cement the area. Both sides. Give it 10 minutes to cure, then press it flat. contact cement it's as much pressure as it is anything else so make sure you push firmly to get things to fully lock in place you only need to wait about five or ten minutes for it to cure and a lot of people say wait for it to dry it just looks dry it's not dry it's cured if you wait for it to dry you can use it as a primer coat for another coat of contact cement which works fantastic but you know I rarely find the need to do that at least with the stuff I do. I mean, if you're working with foam, maybe, but for the most part, it's not needed. Although using it as a primer for paint is brilliant. I 
All right, now I'm gonna give this a full 15 minutes. Let it do what it wants to do. I'm gonna periodically come back, press all the other seams down. I just want spaces like right here in the middle along the shoulders to be nice and flat. Even these around the waist, I'm not terribly worried about because you know, it's gonna have a belt over. It's just the top of these shoulders that is my primary concern. So we're not gonna line the armor here. I think gluing it is gonna be a way better option. So what I've done is I've marked one inch all the way around the edge. I've got a small scrap of leather here that just has the fuzzy side of the Velcro sewn onto it. So this gets glued on here over the seam. That reinforces the seam. It's a much better process all around. I'm gonna glue all along this one inch mark and then fold it over, which will give us a half inch seam allowance all the way around. Shouldn't be too difficult, it shouldn't take too long. So like I said, I'm just gonna glue, give it time to cure, and then uh, go from there. Now we let it cure. We're gonna give it about 10 minutes. Should be just long enough for me to uh, get this one in order. So I tend to err on the side of not waiting long enough for my glue, which I think is better than waiting too long. But that makes me hyper paranoid about all of it. I'm like, whoa, no, I waited too long and now it's dry. It takes this stuff ages to actually dry. True, it's Chicago summer, so, uh, not nearly as long as one would hope, but. Time to 
time to get my mallet and start hitting things. I think we're just gonna put a second coat down. Keep treat this as a primer coat. See how well that works. Seeing how this is easily six foot worth of uh, glue to do, I'm gonna do one side at a time. So it's a nice warm Chicago day, which is causing things to uh, activate a bit faster than one would hope. But we got there, right? Nice. Everything is smooth, glued very well. I haven't decided whether I'm dyeing the inside yet or not, but I'm probably gonna dye it all black to match that outside right there that I really like. So uh, let's see what it looks like on the, on the outfit. So there we go. Leather, shoulder armor. Looks pretty good, I'm very happy with it. Uh, but it's amazing how much just a slight change makes the entire costume feel different. It looks very good, I'm very happy with this. I think we're gonna stick with the leather, I like the leather. So up next is belts, we'll take care of that next week. But, we're almost there. Real close. Go make some shoulder armor.